excited about today's video. I finally get to show you what I've been wanting to record for several weeks now, and it's these pencil cases or crayon cases that look like pencils or crayons. It's really cool. Hello everyone. Welcome to Pieces of the Past. My name is Deborah. I have a passion for fiber arts and creating new things from old. Join me on my journey as I explore the endless possibilities, the tools, and the techniques to create new pieces of the past. This is a box I made. It's just fun, just for fun. But look at these. Look at the crayons and the pencils. Isn't that fun? Let me show you the crayon here. Here we go. There's a crayon. Woo. I don't know if that's backwards or not in the wording, but anyway, there's a crayon. Isn't that fun? And you unzip them and you can carry your crayons. Isn't that fun? And then I have a pencil, which this one just says your name, but you can put anybody's name on it. Isn't that great? It's a pencil. <laughs> and you can carry your pencils in it, right? Okay, and then last one, I'm, I'm going to show you three, uh, three different ones. Uh, and the last one is the colored pencil. Okay, so that one's, uh, that's what most of these are in the in here. They're not crayons, they're colored pencils, but you get the idea. Isn't that fun? So great teacher's gifts, um, great gifts for kids uh, with all their, na their names on them in, the in their favorite color, right? So uh, I want to show you today, I'm going to show you how to make the crayon one because it's the easiest one to make, but the technique is the same for all of them. And so once you get one down, you can, you can make any of them. I'm also going to show you, uh, I'm going to put on my um, website a cheat sheet that gives you all the measurements that you need for all of the, um, for all three of the different pencils. and. Um, because the rectangles are different, like, that's upside down. Let's do it this way. Okay, so like, like these rectangles here, this and this one are the same size, right? And, but this crayon is actually a solid color. Um, and so you wouldn't do the little gray strip, right? So when you go to make these, I'll have the, the measurements for the pieces you need for this one, this one, and the colored pencil one, all right? And all the other um, things you need, like you need a zipper and, and you need some uh, fusible fleece. I'll show you how to make that yourself. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I can't wait to get started, so let's go. Okay, here are the three different ones that you can make. These are the pieces for the pencil. You can see there's the eraser and uh, the lead at the other end. Okay, so you can kind of see the pencil there. And then this is the crayon right here. You only have three colors and then this is the inside. So there's your crayon. And then this one would be the uh, colored pencil. It has the gold, right, and then the rest of these are like that. Oop. Yeah, like that, I think, yeah. So you can kind of see, you can kind of envision the uh, colored pencil and the crayon and the regular pencil. Uh, today we're gonna make the crayon. So let's put these out of the way. All right, so the first thing that, that you'll see when you uh, get your list of materials, one of the things you need is fusible fleece. Now, fusible fleece is not cheap, and uh, so I make my own. What I do is I take, let me push this back out of the way, I take cotton batting, it's actually 80-20, so it's 80% cotton, 20% polyester, um, and then I take woven, fusible interfacing woven make sure it's woven and I I iron that to that and what I end up with is a 
a few a uh hello what's the word fusible fleece this is not fusible but it's so in now okay but it's padded uh pencil so it, it's i know you can't see the padding but you can kind of see how wide it is right it is it's uh, padded okay makes it nice so you don't feel all the the pencils and and things so much okay so I make my own and I just I just iron that to that and then I cut my pieces out um, of that now when you do make your own one tip is that this batting has a what we call a pimple side and a dimple side you will notice that one side is a little more bumpy that's the pimple side so you want to iron your your um, fusible woven interfacing to the pimple side so that way that you have a nice smooth side over here and a smooth side here you want to encase the pimple part in there so anyway that's just a whole different whoops there we go that's just a whole different uh just a bonus tip for you to make fusible fleece you can make it um for any application anytime you're wanting to pad something you can use that technique to make it it's much cheaper okay so for the crayon you're going to need uh, some supplies and I will tell you what those are right now and then we'll move on to um, to making it you're going to need your fabrics and the measurements will be in the file that you that you download uh, for those fabrics you're going to need a coordinating lining fabric you're going to need the uh, fusible uh, fleece I, I call it fusible fleece but it's really just um, stabilized fleece uh, and then you're going to need a zipper and I use double-sided tape and thread and a sewing machine I think that's pretty much it Okay, so on my crayon, you can see that I have the word crayon and the stripes. Uh, that is done with my uh, Cricut machine, and I will put the SVG file. If you happen to have a Cricut machine, you can cut the same one out and use it. So I will put that SVG file uh, in the same place that I put the measurement um, file on my website for you. So you can... Uh, use that to cut out your your crayon this is um, iron-on heat transfer vinyl and also one other thing is that uh, be sure you don't change this to Crayola if you're especially if you're gonna sell it because Crayola is trademarked crayon is not trademarked so that's why you can put crayon on these so this is a crayon okay all right so if you're going to make the crayon then you and if you have the SVG file, then you end up having something like this. That's your heat transfer vinyl. Make sure that you apply that to your fabric before you cut out your pieces. Okay, that's just an extra for an extra tip for anybody that uh, is going to use the SVG file. Just be sure you apply it to your fabric before sewing it together, so that the heat transfer vinyl is is within the seams of your of your bag and not able to be peeled off the edges okay so that's just an extra little tip for those who want to make it like that you can make it just like this and it still looks like a crayon or you can write the word crayon on there with a sharpie or something like that I don't know be creative okay so you're also going to need let's see we got the the fleece two pieces and all the measurements for all of these will be in the description below in uh they'll take there will be a link it will take you to my website and you can it's free you can just uh, grab the file there so all these measurements will be there this is the inside of my crayon so i chose a coordinating fabric and these are the outside pieces that I need for my crayon. Now, 
I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you probably can. This is lighter in the center than the top and the bottom of the crayon, and just like on this one. And that's because the crayon wrapper, I noticed when I was looking at crayons um, online, that the, I don't have any kids in the house, so I had to go online to look at crayons. Um, the wrapper is lighter in color than the actual crayon. So I just found me some blue that was just a little bit lighter than the crayon itself, okay? So those are the pieces you're gonna need and you're gonna need a zipper. And I will have that on there on the supply list as well. So first thing that you wanna do to make your crayon, put that up there, yeah, is you want to sew these three pieces together. Now you cut them out, two of them, because there's a front and a back to this crayon. And so we're gonna go do that. You line them up the way that you are gonna see them, which is, yeah, this way. So this is the short one here. This is the wrapper, and this is the point one, okay? And the instructions will tell you, tell you that. And so I'm just going to go and sew these right sides together. These happen to be solid colored on both sides, so it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go sew these. Oops. Just sew them right sides together. I'm gonna to do that twice, and I'll come back and have my outer part of my crayon put together. All right, let's sew these together. You use a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance for these. And you can do one right after the other. These are really fast if you're making them like to sell. They're super fast to do. I went and sewed my pieces, my three pieces for my crayon together, and then I went ahead and applied the uh, the SVG, the heat transfer vinyl that I made with my Cricut. I went ahead and applied it. So you want to make sure that's applied before you sew anything together. Okay. So now we have all of our pieces ready to go for the crayon. So now. Let's go to assembly. We're we gonna have to cut out our pencil shape. Now, the, the one last thing, and I know this is all over the place, but the one last thing that I am gonna put up there is a um, drawing of this. This is my template, and this is what I use to cut out my, uh, my shape. They all have the same shape, the crayon, the, the colored pencil, and the regular pencil. And so I just made me a master, um, a master template so I can cut them out easier, sort of like using a ruler. So you want to lay the pieces on top of each other, make cutting faster, like so. Make sure you can see that. Let's put this over here. Move it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So. You need to put that template on top of there like that, and then you can just rotary cut around it. Now you're already gonna have it cut into rectangles because of the supply list, and so all you really have to do cutting now is just cut this point off. Okay, and it's identical on both sides, so it doesn't matter if they're right sides together or on top of each other. It doesn't make any difference. That string is really bothering me. I'm going to cut it off. 
There we go. Okay. So you're going to do that with the outside part. I think there's my crayon. Isn't that fun? And then the inside part. Now, if you have a directional print, you want to make sure these are kind of falling all over the place. But if you have a, you know, something that's sitting straight up, you want to make sure you do it in reverse for the other side. Okay, so lay this one here and cut it out. last these two fleece pieces all right now when i'm making the I, I showed you already how to make the the stabilized fleece um don't try to use wonder under if you know what that is um it doesn't <laughs> It doesn't look very good when you um, when you put it inside your bag. It makes the the outside of the the skin of the bag look really weird. It it makes it look like it's stained or something. So I, I wouldn't use it. Um, definitely want to use the woven interfacing instead. So there, I have all my pieces cut. Okay, and so now we're just going to assemble it. So we start by taking. Our crayon piece and laying it on the nice smooth side of the uh, stabilized fleece. All right, do that on both of them. Okay. All right. So we're gonna set those up here. Oops. Okay. Now sure that you can see this part. All right. You're going to take your your lining and you're going to take a piece of your double-sided tape. Now you don't have to use this tape, but I find it makes it a lot easier to use. And you're going to cut a piece from not the point, but down right here to the to the end back here. So just like that that big okay and we're going to stick it down right along the very edge just like that okay I got some on my finger okay and then we're going to peel off the backing all right move this up here so you can see better you see that yeah great Okay, then we're gonna put our zipper right side up also on here. Now, if you have a stop on your zipper, like this is an extra that I had and I don't have a, a zip on it yet, uh, a pull, but um, you don't want this inside your, um, you don't wanna sew over this part right here. You can either just cut it off now or you can just leave it outside of the bag like I'm doing here. And that works too, so. My zipper's sticking off on both in, on both sides, so that's fine. And then I want to take the corresponding. This would not be the corresponding piece because it's got the word on it, and then when I fold it out this way, it would be upside down. So we don't want to use that one. We want to use this one. And this one you lay right side down. Okay. So we're going to put another piece of tape. I use a lot of tape. I love this stuff. Okay, and put this along the edge here, like so. All right, and then we're going to peel that off, and this is where we put our our sandwich thingy here. Now these aren't stuck together, so you know they're going to get like floppy. So just be careful, keep them as lined up as possible, and lay them on top of here, matching. The lining. 
all right and then you're gonna go sew with a zipper foot right here right next to the zipper teeth okay and then we're going to open it up and press it whoops this way all right so I'll show you that let's go sew this piece change my foot If you saw how I did that, that was my, um, oh, wrong one. That, these are my Teflon feet. And uh, this is a quick change right here. So I just push the button in and load it like this. And then tighten it down. It's nice, I really like these. I'll, I'll have a link in the description for, for these. They're awesome. Okay, so we're gonna sew this right beside those zipper feet, and I, I mean those zipper teeth, and I can feel them in there. So, Let's go right beside. Sounds funny though. Okay, that sounds funny. Yeah. Taking a break. Oh man, look at that. That's a mess. Okay, so after we sew it on that side, we're going to peel these layers back and we're going to press. I don't know if you can see that or not, I hope so. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna press it like that. So I'll go do that. Okay, the zipper that you use for this is a number three. I don't know if I said that or not, but anyway, when you get through stitching that side, it looks like this. You have your zipper, your front, or in this case, your back, and your lining, okay? Then you're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. So we're going to take this lining, which would be on the inside of the purse like this. So we need to put the tape at this edge right here. So let's put the tape up there. And this tape I'm using is an eighth of an inch. I don't know if I said that or not. Um, I don't like the quarter of an inch that much because it sticks to my needle in the sewing machine and then it just gums everything up. So I use the eighth inch, which just holds everything. Now, when you put this on here, make sure that you're lining up your back uh, rear end like this and your point. So you're laying this right on top of that one where the right side of this um, interior is facing the right right side of that interior, okay? So you wanna lay it on there like that, and then you want to stick it down to the tape. So that's keeping everything very straight. Okay, so, yeah. You can see I got off a little bit here, so I'm gonna peel it up and put it back on again, move it over a little bit. Which you can do with tape. Okay, so, there we go. I'm gonna line it up like that and that. Get that corner square and go over here. Okay, so again, the right side of the zipper is facing up and the right side of your lining is facing up. You do that on both sides. Both, both times that you do this, you do it the same way. Okay, so now that's more lined up. And it's a little higher because of the seam that we used, but that's how that works. Trust me, it will all work out. These are so easy, you guys. They are so fun. 
Okay, you get another piece of tape, same thing we did before, on the zipper, right here. Okay, stick it down, and then your crayon front piece goes right like that. You stick it down. All right. Stick this down. We're going to line it up with everything else. Line it up at the top. Stick it down real good. There we go. And then we're going to go sew that. And then we're going to peel those layers back away from the zipper. All right. We are almost done, believe it or not. Oops, this one I have to sew this way. Okay. Okay, so I sewed that second one and I'm gonna peel this back and then I'm going to peel the inside part back and then we have an almost completed bag. So I'm gonna go iron this and we don't do any top stitching on these because that would ruin the look of the, of the crayon. I mean, crayons don't have a line of stitching going down them, so. So when I do these, uh, I try to put the, the zipper, uh, the, what's it called, hello, the zipper pull, yeah, uh, at the tip. I just like to keep them consistent that way. You can do it either way, it doesn't matter. So, uh, so here's what it looks like this far, okay, and then, you're just going to put your zipper pull on if you haven't, which I'm going to do that now, uh, or you can just uh, move your zipper pull down and, or up when we do this next step. So let me pull this apart and put the zipper pull in here. Let's see, I want it going this way. on there and we want to take and cut the zipper regardless of which zipper you're using what kind or whatever we want to cut off the end of it at least at this end this one you don't have to we'll um, cut that off later when we turn the bag right side out so now what you want to do is you want to uh, let me remember yeah Pull this back to about where the where the line is, the crayon logo cray, crayon logo line, and you want to take and separate these where you have the right side of the crayon and the batting, the fleece stuff. All that makes one side and then the other side is your two lining pieces. Okay, it's real important that that, that zipper is open uh, when you do this. So make sure that zipper is open. So I don't use tape for this usually. Um, usually I just pin it, put a couple pins in it to keep it straight. You can use clips; it doesn't matter, or nothing if you're really good. So we're going to sew around it from this pin all the way around to this pin. And we're going to leave this part open so we can turn it right side out. When you get to the zipper to stitch that, I usually lay it to one side or the other. kind of have to fiddle with it because it's really bulky. Uh, you might want to, I'll show you when I get over to the machine, you might want to invest in what's called a hump jumper or a 
Um, it's used in denim sewing and it helps your needle get over the big giant, see that big giant hill right there? I'll show you how to use that when we go over there and I'll put a link in the description for that too. So here we go, we're gonna go sew this. All right, quarter inch seam through the whole bag. Here we go. And back stitch at that point when you start and back stitch at the point where you end because you're gonna be turning this right side out. So we're gonna go down here to the corner and pivot. Now this is where you're working with the zipper. And so I use this little gadget right here. I'll show you that when I get to the jump. Okay, so when you get to this point right here, the foot doesn't want to go up onto this big hill right here. So you raise your pressure foot and you put this underneath and then it makes it level with, with the zipper part. So let's hope the needle doesn't hit the zipper. Here we go. See, like that. Then you just take that out and keep going. Get down to the quarter inch here. Maybe one more. There we go. And then we turn. And stitch all the way down. Okay, now you want to keep a quarter inch away from that because you're going to pivot a little bit. We're going to line these points up. Oh, one thing I didn't mention that I'm going to do right now is um, grab some scissors. I like to take out this fleece part right here. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, the on the point right I like to take off just snip off the end of it like that well maybe a little more um, because it's a lot of bulk to shove down into that little point when you turn it right side out so I meant to say that over there but I didn't um, anyway it makes it a lot easier to turn it that didn't cut right and it's not gonna it's not gonna mess anything up if you take that out okay so let's keep going to the point turn back go the other way on the point Again, if it doesn't want to now, and this one's laying down flat, so it's fine. Uh -uh, no, not really. Let's see. Okay. Like that. And points over here and line them up. careful when you're stitching the points because there's their bias and they stretch. You don't want to pull them out of whack. All right, and then to this pin right here. Okay. Then, okay, so then you want to after you've sewn it all, you want to, I'm going to turn it without cutting it. Oh man. Okay. Cut off your points. Okay. And you also want to cut off these corners right here a little bit. Just shave them off a little bit so you don't have so much bulk in there. Okay. 
And then these back corners back here, this one, and this one, okay? And you wanna cut this, the zipper off if you haven't. Okay, so once you've clipped the points off the end and the corners and everything, and you've got your zipper all cut off and everything, then you want to open it up at the lining hole that you left, and you want to turn it right side out. Here we go. needle you most of the time just careful careful because you don't have too much you can put it all the way through if you're not careful okay and then poke out that side and then where your zipper came out over here okay and then the back sides we don't put the lining inside yet we've got to sew it up also, as far as the thread goes, um, I started when I was making these, when I first started making them, I um, tried to do coordinating thread, <laughs> and for the crayon it's okay, because you know, you could use blue thread for this blue crayon, but um, when you get into like the pencil, and I'll show you that in a minute, <laughs> um, you would have to change every inch that you're sewing, and that that didn't work very well, so I was like, no, I don't think so. Okay, so I got it turned. Isn't that cute? That is so cute. Okay, the last thing that you want to do to finish your bag is you want to pull this inside part out as much as you can. Let's make it, let's unzip it as far as it'll go. There we go. And then you want to take that seam that's still left open there what is going on with the threads okay what I usually do is is roll this seam I don't know if you can see that or not but I roll it to where I can hold it and then I roll this one out where I can hold it as best as I can and then that usually I pull on them and that helps me fold that that seam allowance in that's not yet stitched right and you can either lay it down and pin it, which what you would do is lay it down, get it the way you want it and pin it. And I'll do that this time. I don't normally pin it, but, but you can. Okay, and all we're gonna do is go back to the machine and stitch right on the very, very edge. Make sure you're catching both layers and just stitch right on the very edge. The closer to the edge, the better it looks It looks better. And this is where I put my product tag in as well. So uh, in all of mine, I have my scan code. Um, so that's where I put my tags on these. So let's go sew that. You wanna start where the stitching stopped, right at the very edge of it. and then stitch right on the very very edge because we just folded the seam allowance in and we're stitching them together we're just top stitching them together and when you get to where it started over there you stop okay so then you have your lining sticking out but all you have to do is poke the lining in and there's your bag it's all done give it a good press and you got it isn't that cool that's it look at that isn't that fun imagine if that had your kids names on them or or your grandkids awesome okay so for the, you're gonna use the same template 
the same double-sided tape, same zipper, but for the, what is this? Let's see. For the colored pencil, you want to use these pieces. You want to use the same, same size um, fleece, okay? You want to use the same size lining. This one's Care Bears, isn't that fun? And then you're going to use the main piece. Let me pull one of those so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the green one. All right. So you're going to use the main piece. And then this is the tip down here. This is right here. That's muslin. Then you want something gold or shiny for to make a band. Um, a lot of colored pencils are just all color. And I was like, well, that's boring. So I needed to put something in there. So these are some um, fancy colored pencils. And then the color up here. So that's how that would go. Okay, and I'll have all the measurements and, and the layout um, diagram for you uh, on that cheat sheet. Um, I think what I'm going to start doing on my videos is making a cheat sheet for each one so you can go back and pull the, pull the sheet up and uh, see exactly how to do it. It's not instructions. It's you have to watch the video for the, you know, the tutorial, but it works. Okay, and then for the pencil, you need the same template, the same zipper, the same uh, fleece. Then you need the body of the pencil, which is usually yellow. You need the silver band at the top. You need the pink eraser. The muslin for the wood part of the pencil and the black for the tip. Now, one thing that is different about the colored pencil and the regular pencil, let me grab one of those, is that you want to, when you put your fleece to the back of your um, assembled piece, right, you want to sew a couple of lines here, indention, top stitched lines, um, before you put the pieces together with the zipper all right so you want to stitch these lines and then assemble the whole bag so you want to do assemble this and then put this right here this with this right stitch your lines and then go go to the double-sided tape and the assembly process to put the zipper in i hope that makes sense um, it just, the crayon doesn't have these lines because it has a wrapper instead. So it, it looks like that. Okay. So that's what the lines are for. They're, they're decorative. And you can also, you don't have to use solid colors necessarily. Especially in the colored pencils. They have rainbow colored pencils and things like that. So you could do that. Or in this case, the eraser, I just used a, um, a pink white uh, looks like a bleached fabric that I had in my stash instead of the traditional, you know, pink eraser. It doesn't matter. So I love opening them up to see what's in them, <laughs> the minions. So I think that covers it all. Uh, if not, I will put notes on here or uh, put something in the description if I miss something. If you have a question and uh, I need to answer, uh, let me know. And if you have just any general sewing questions, give me a shout on, you know, leave a comment, please. Because that's, I, I really enjoy communicating with you guys. Um, the comments are getting more and more. And so I am just super excited about that. I can talk to you guys and I know who I'm, who I'm doing these videos for. So I hope you enjoyed this. I think every time I do one of these, I think it's like all over the place and I have no idea if I said the right things. But um, hopefully, I did. <laughs> go down, go over and to my website, download the cheat sheet. It'll give you all the measurements, and uh, go make some pencils. Uh, it's it's been so much fun to do these, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy them. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.